Hi everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel. We're doing a special Sunday night live for everyone. I'm Tammy from the blog Nutmeg Notebook in case you're new to us today. And we blog about our whole food plant-based SOS free lifestyle. So we love to batch cook because batch cooking is what helps us get through the week eating healthy, week after week after week. We get lots and lots of questions about it, and I just wanted to show you what we made today. So we were out of town for a couple of days, and so we got home last night, too late to go grocery shopping. So we did that first thing this morning. We went to uh, Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, and Costco, and loaded up on everything so that we could batch prep. So we just wanted to show you what we did today. So even before we went to the grocery store this morning, I made these quinoa banana oat muffins. I just need to look to see what's showing. So, Hi, my name's Tom. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I didn't introduce you. <laughs> I'm, I'm here monitoring the, the chat. If you so choose to chat or have a question for Tammy, let me know on screen here and I will give her a nudge. <laughs> He will nudge and me. And get her attention. <laughs> so uh, with that, I'll let Tammy. So that's why I'm sitting here. I'm sorry. I'm sitting here for you. This <laughs> is, uh, you know, because it's we do a live show on Tuesdays at 4 o'clock Pacific time. And we it's called Tuesday with Tammy and Tom. And so when I introduce that on Tuesdays when we go live, then it, it, you know, it just sequences to me introducing you when you come and sit down because I say, oh, Tom's behind the camera. So I'm off my game because we don't usually do a live on yeah, Sunday this night. Is, this is an extra impromptu. We decided 15 minutes ago to go live. Yeah, so. we decided 15 minutes ago. We had all this food out and I said, hey, we should go live and show everybody what we made today. So uh, before we even went to the grocery store this morning, the first thing I did when I got up was I mixed up a batch of my quinoa banana oat muffins. And this isn't all of them. I actually I had to pull these out of the freezer because once they got cool, we went ahead and put them in freezer safe containers and popped them in our freezer. And then if we want one, we can just, we can let it thaw out on the countertop, in the fridge, or we can put it in the microwave for 30 seconds and thaw it out. So, and I have a the recipe on the blog. Tom will link to the quinoa banana oat muffins. And there's like, I don't know, I have like five different recipes that you can make with the basic mix. You can also do cookies and granola and all kinds of fun things. Everybody's from the East Coast. What we've are you got, guys doing? We've got, well, what East Coast, it, yeah, we have North Virginia, North Carolina, Tennessee, uh, New Jersey, Columbia, South Carolina. Um, where's where's the you know every, it's everybody that's east. That's awesome. To, go east to the Mississippi well, people. That's because all of the West Coasters are either cooking dinner or eating dinner right now. Oh, okay. Don't you suppose? All right. That's what it is. So for the quinoa banana oat muffin mix, if you haven't made it before, I like to make up like four to six dry mixes of it and put it in containers. You can either store it in your freezer, your refrigerator, or in your pantry. And then when you want to make muffins or one of the wonderful desserts that I, recipes that I have for using it, then you, you already have it mixed up. Because I think, I just want to work smarter, not harder. So I don't want to have to get every ingredient out every time I want to make something. So I try to make as many things ahead of time as I can. So, and those freeze up beautifully. Kids love them, our granddaughter loves them. Everybody will eat them. They have a lot of cinnamon and nutmeg in them. And so they're just, they're delicious. We eat them all year long, but especially right now, those seasonings are what everybody's looking for. So we, we got those made. That's a staple item at our house and something that I like to have made all the time. The other thing that's really important to us to always have made are our salads. And yes, we actually do batch prep our salads. And this is what they look like. We, we, this is the only thing that we weigh. This weighs a, a pound before we put the tomatoes on it. And we batch prep up all the salads. We've got a video on that for you. And you can see we've got 11 of them. Sometimes we get 12. It kind of depends on how much red cabbage. I chop up and throw in, I think, or how big the romaine lettuce is that we get. And today it was pretty wimpy looking. So 
uh, we only got 11 salads, but we each eat one of these salads every day as a main meal. And that's something that we learned from Dr. Furman when we first went plant-based in 2013, and we've been doing it ever since, except now for the last, I don't know, three years or so, we chop these before we eat them. And we've got a video all about that. And the reason we can eat a big, beautiful salad like that every day is because they're already made for us. I got really tired of having to get out all the salad ingredients every day and making us those salads. And I thought, oh, okay, we've got, there's got to be a better way. And then a friend of mine, BJ Swingle, showed on a, a Facebook Live how she did hers, and she was doing hers in the canning jars. And I thought, that is a brilliant idea, but my salads needed to be in a bigger container, so I came up with this method. Yes? Trudy must know how long they last in those containers. Yeah, they'll last, um, they, well, you know what, I'll tell you the truth. I ate one today that was a week old because last Sunday, and Tom's going to have a week old one for dinner one from tonight. Last Sunday, so, so yeah. So th those and um, just a, they started to get a, just a little bit of discoloration on the edges of the romaine. So you know how oxidation happens when you cut an apple and apple sits out and the air gets to it and then it starts to get a little bit of brown on the edge. Well, the only thing that looked not as great in my salad today was that the edges of the romaine had a little bit of oxidation on it, but otherwise everything was great. But it really depends on how fresh the ingredients are when you get them, and it depends on how wet they are when you put them in the container. But I have a video, you could link to that too, um, how to batch prep, simple salad batch prep video and then one of our YouTube lives, we did like Tammy's top tips for perfect salads or something. Do you remember? I can't remember what name it is, what is the a, name of it is. Is that in Tuesdays with Tammy? Yes. We did, one yeah. of, we did one in the spring or in the summer all about how to make them so that they'll last. So how long they last really depends on a lot of variables. We like we bought everything this morning, made our salads today. We start eating them tomorrow, and they will be good, you know, through Friday or Saturday. Or, you know, I ate a whole one week old salad today and it was delicious. So, so there you go. That's that is, is our salad. Quinoa banana oat muffins is that the right muffin recipe? Yes, okay, I'm that's the that basic. Now. As I, I'm adding links to the paragraph because again, we didn't set up for this in advance. I'm adding these links into the description right now. They will not show up on your device until you refresh the screen and allow those new um, bits of information to populate. So, or just listen to the whole thing and then go back and check them when you're done. Yeah, we'll I was gonna say at the, end, at the end of the video, if they click on see more, isn't that what they click on? Yeah, in, in the description down below, show more. Show more, that's and, what it and, is. But if you haven't refreshed, what I'm putting in now won't show up. There. Okay, So. all right. So let's see, let's go on to the next thing. So Tom made a great big pot of brown rice. We have an aroma rice cooker that we use. And so he made a big thing of rice. And then we use these four cup Rubbermaid, they're called take along containers. They're on our Amazon page. Can you link to the Amazon page too? Mm -hmm. um, and so then once the rice is done cooking, then he portions it out into these four cup containers. We'll put one of these in the refrigerator and then you get six, one, two, three, four, you get six. And then the rest of these will go in the freezer. That way we can pull one out at a time. Then I made this, um, yes, question. Granny M, who was batch cooking today, I think, um, said the the, her muffins came out really dry. Is that normal? She's eating them with cranberry orange sauce. They're dense. They're very dense, but ours are still moist. Yeah. So it all depends on your oven. It also depends on what you bake them in. Um, and your oven might run hotter than my oven. So you have to figure out the right amount of time for your oven and whatever kind of pan you make because you know the size of the muffins also varies, muffin pans vary. So I've been baking mine for 35 minutes in the silicone muffin pan, 
and I measure out and do a half a cup of the batter in each one. But ours are not dry. Ours are still moist in the middle. And of course, these are very dense. They don't get fluffy like a traditional muffin because they don't have flour in them. They're made with a variety of oats and quinoa. And they, they're an emergency travel lunch all by themselves. <laughs> well, they are. We can, you know, when we travel, we take these yeah. to keep us going if we can't get a regular meal. So kind of play with it, see what works best for you. It also depends on how ripe your bananas are. The riper the bananas, then the more moist they are. If your bananas aren't as ripe, they're drier. Like today, my bananas weren't as ripe as I like them to be. And so I used a little extra banana and a little extra applesauce because they just weren't as soft and they weren't, um, I don't wanna say I ever use liquidy bananas, but they didn't have as much moisture in them. And so all of those things are variables and um, can make a, a difference. So when you're mixing them up, if your batter seems to be a bit on the dry side, you can add extra banana or you can add extra applesauce to it, just because that gives you a lot of moisture. So I hope that answers Sandra added your raisins question. to hers. To, added Ra some raisins yeah, you to can. Her you so. can. Um, so, and the reason I don't is because then our granddaughter picks all the raisins out and eats all the raisins instead of eating the muffin. And so if I don't put raisins in them, then she'll eat the whole muffin. Okay. Um, Suzanne says a silicone pan might help. She's getting a silicone pan. Uh, mm -hmm. Candy wants us to come to South Florida and, and do some mentoring. We're going to be in Florida in February, but we'll be at my sister's house. <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then we're going on that boat uh, <laughs> for the, the whole Holistic food plant-based Holistic Holiday boat. at Sea ship. Cruise. Yeah, they would be upset the if I said boat. It's cruise. a ship. So we're going on the vegan ship Yeah, cruise, anybody yeah. else going on the Holistic Holiday at Sea Cruise, the vegan cruise with all the vegan speakers? Let us know, because okay. we're going to be on that. All right. Well, I'm going to jump okay. over and do some more um, description stuff. So I'll come back to comments in just a minute. Okay. So that is that is the rice. And the reason we like the uh, containers like this is we if we forgot to take some rice out to thaw, it's thin enough that we can break a piece off. So that works great. The next thing I made was my, oh, I just, I love this. It's the, um, uh, I just went brain dead on what it's called, curry ginger butternut squash soup. You can obviously tell I was not prepared to go live today. And I made a double batch of this. Now this soup recipe, the only way you can get it is if you subscribe to the blog, which is free to subscribe, to Nutmeg Notebook. So if you're not a subscriber, hop on over to nutmegnotebook.com. There's a little tab at the top that says subscribe. All you have to do is give us your email address and immediately our um, system, our MailChimp system, sends you the link to a PDF to get this recipe. And that's the only way that you can get that recipe. And this soup is delicious. I wasn't, I'm not feeling really great today and I kind of feel like I'm getting a cold and a sore throat. And so I was really wanting this soup. It has turmeric in it and it has ginger in it and has curry in it and onions and garlic and you know all the things that make me feel good but then it also has some you know sweet components to it some apple and stuff so it's wonderful so as soon as it got done today i put some in a mug and had a mug of it and i started feeling better and it, it's okay if it's a placebo yeah. effect. I don't care. It just made me feel better. It's got good stuff in it. It, could it has be real. a lot. Yeah, it could be real. Uh, Suzanne wants to know, was your soup done in a six or eight quart uh, for your uh, double To batch? double it, I did it in the eight quart. And this is how much it made, um, less a mug full of it. And do you remember what okay, size you have some these? already and I don't have any You yet. could have had some. Those are four cup. Those these are four, are four cup? Yeah. Okay, so these are four cup containers. So that was like, I probably got like 21 cups of a double recipe and we were at Costco and they had the organic butternut squash that was already cut and prepped, you know, peeled and cut. And so I just bought two of those. Those come in two pound containers. So I bought two of them and it was really good 
squash today. You know how at the beginning of the season, it's a little bit pale. Today, they were like deep orange and really had a lot of flavor. So, and that's a really fun soup. In fact, we got an email from one of our readers this morning. It was either yesterday or this morning. And she said she had um, people over for a holiday party. And so she made our soup, the um, curry soup, and she served it in mugs as everybody was coming in, which is something that I suggest you do. And she gave everybody a mug of the hot soup and it was a big hit. So, so if you didn't subscribe, Go over and subscribe so you can get that recipe. And Tom has sent this recipe out to all subscribers. If you're a historic subscriber, you have this recipe in your junk <laughs> email. email folder, I promise, in your computer. Yes. Um, unless you've gone in and deleted the junk out of the junk folder. Otherwise, <laughs> go to your junk email or your spam folder, whichever yeah. it is, and do a search for Nutmeg Notebook because the recipe will come from yeah. nutmegnotebook.com. And if you don't have us in your contact list, when MailChimp mails you the uh, link to the PDF, it'll go in your junk email folder. I, because yeah, I think it's actually that MailChimp sends it from either Tammy at nutmegnotebook.com oh, does it? Uh -huh. or, or it used to be Tom at nutmegnotebook.com, but I okay. changed it to Tammy because people kept asking me questions they wanted to ask you. <laughs> so I put, I put her well, name on you. it. thank you. You're putting it back on me. Well, I can still help. Okay, I see how it is. Okay. So I'll keep out a couple of these soups because I'll want it. I'll probably want at least a mugful every day, but uh, there's different ways you can serve it. And one way is to put it over some brown rice, put brown rice in the bottom of the bowl or wild rice. That's really my favorite. And then put the hot soup on top, then chop up some arugula or whatever greens you have. Arugula is kind of fun because it's you know, a little bit bitter and it's a nice contrast with the sweet soup. But I also like, I forgot to buy arugula today. So I have the super greens from Costco, the baby, I think they're baby mm. super greens. And so I'll just chop some of those yeah. up and add that to the soup. And then I'll be getting my greens, my grains and all the other delicious things all in the same bowl. Yes. Okay. Um, and my hand's not off screen. They can see when I was going to say, hand. can they see that you're doing that? Yeah. That means, <laughs> this means there's a question. <laughs> or no, I guess I am maybe off screen. Oh, I think uh, it is off screen. I can't see it. They're, they're wondering why you're okay, on no, my wiggling. finger's kind of there. I, I raise my hand when I have a, when you have a question. Yeah, so. that way I can see it out of the corner um, of my eye because I have so good peripheral vision. So maybe because vision. we went batch shopping this morning and then batch cooking this afternoon, um, we get asked quite often how much does a week's worth of batch cooking cost in terms of the food budget. It does vary by region. It varies on whether or not you're buying organic, whether you have organic available or not. Of course, we buy organic wherever we can. But And oftentimes things are much more expensive yeah. here in California, California than they are where you live how, however, if you live in the Midwest. That being said... And we also don't take out... Like if we buy batteries or we buy some clothes or we okay. buy but today cleaning was, supplies. Yeah, but today was mostly food. Was it mostly food So do you recall today? what Costco was this morning? I don't remember. Like I'd have to look on the I'd have to look on the twenty dollars. I don't know. Hundred and twenty dollars and I don't have it. And then here. Whole Foods was like eighty dollars. And then how much did we spend and, it? And, and then But but you have to remember too that a lot of that food isn't just this week. It, it's, it's it lasts. For weeks to come. It's for weeks yeah. to come. We won't eat all. You know, this is ten servings of soup right here in these uh -huh. five dishes. So these will we'll be eating on these into the next couple of months. The reason that the question came up is um, Candy is cooking for six people. Oh, uh huh. So, um, so they would go through this more quickly, but you know, yeah. just on food budget in general, we feel like we spend uh, considerably less money on in this way of eating with the batch cooking and mm -hmm. without buying any of the products that we used to buy. Yeah, because we're not buying the processed foods. And so, yeah. you know, we buy the big bag of rice. Um, I don't know, is it 15 pounds of rice at yeah, Costco? Yeah, tw well, 12 or 15, depending on the brand. Yeah, so, you know, which that, and then we buy that once every two mm -hmm. months or three months or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, so our weekly food budget isn't really a weekly food budget because we're always, you know, supplementing and buying things that are going to last for weeks and some things that last us for months. So, so, so we don't keep track of the, we don't yeah. keep track of the money yeah. part of it and we never publish it. 
because unless you live where we live and shop where we shop and buy the exact same brands that, that we buy, it isn't really uh, relevant. Um, okay. Sylvia just logged on from Mexico City. She wins the oh. Furthest South Award. Wow. That's we have awesome. Canada here too. So we have. That's awesome. That's very cool. Okay. So then um, another thing that I made was this. Um, I have to look at what it's called oven baked chickpea ratatouille. And this is a recipe that my friend Dottie gave me because uh, we went to her and her husband's house for dinner one night and she made this and I loved it. And then she brought it to a potluck we were at and the second time I had it, I was like, you have to give me that recipe because that is so good. And she got it off the internet. It's Adrena Burton recipe. And again, it's called curry gin. No, it's called oven baked chickpea ratatouille. Oven baked chickpea ratatouille from Adrena Burton. From Adrena Burton. You can probably Google that. Yeah, Google it and see if you can find it. Or it could have been like on a Forks Over Knives menu planner recipe. I'm not sure where she got the recipe, but she shared it with me and you bake it in a casserole and it's really delicious. So I'm going to put a container of it in the freezer and then I'm going to leave some out for us to have this week. And then of course, you know, here's, here's two things that I have to make every week. And if, if they're the only things that I get made, I don't care. I know that I can get through the week. And one is the salads because that is one of my meals every day. And the other is having starch made. So these, this is, I think this was, are those potatoes three pounds, the bags of yes, potatoes? Yes, three pounds. So this is a three pound bag of Yukon Gold potatoes. And I really like the little ones. So we look for the bags of little ones. And today at Whole Foods, most of their potatoes in the Yukon Gold bags were bigger. Trader Joe's did have some bags with the smaller. So we did our Yukon Gold potatoes and we have a video all about how to bake potatoes. So if you want to know how we bake them, you can see the video. Can you link to the potato video? It was a YouTube live and it was on my birthday. It was July 23rd. Okay. I remember that, but I don't know what number it's, it's called. Like number four. All of, it, it's titled, it's all about potatoes. If you, if you Google Tuesday with Tammy, it's all about potatoes. It'll take you right yeah. to it. But I'll, I'll see if I can catch up with it. I'm okay. still working on the salad batch prep video. Oh, there you go. It's right there. So then these are Stokes sweet potatoes. And Tom really likes these. So these are like, he'll have these for a snack. And he likes those. But obviously he doesn't eat them every day because he only wanted two of them to be cooked today. And so we have those. And then as if you're a follower to Nutmeg Notebook, you know that my favorite potato in the world is a Japanese sweet potato. I absolutely love these. I usually have one every day. So I have these ready for the week. But, you know, if, if I end up sharing one with my, our granddaughter or Tom ends up eating one, I have more in the pantry that I can bake in case they don't last me until our next batch cooking session. So, and I, we have the video all about how to bake those. We have videos on how to air fry them, how to make a dessert out of them, all kinds of fun stuff. Jamie has a question about, do we worry about E. coli in the salad mix? As much as anybody in the country does, we respond promptly to any recalls or any news we hear about um, that being an issue in particular with the romaine. We immediately check uh, the wrappers, even if it means I have to go dumpster dive to see where, 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 the, where the wrapper came from, from maybe what we just batched. So we pay close attention to that. We've never had an issue. Uh, we do wash our romaine before we mm -hmm. mix it. So mm -hmm. I don't know. That's a risk that we all share nationally, regardless of what part of the country you're in and, and regardless of, of where the romaine is coming from. We've had issues coming out of Arizona historically. Uh, there was an issue someplace else more recently. In California. Uh, but, but the outbreak would show up on the West Coast. So what happened in between California and, and, and the East Coast, I mean. So, so yeah, we just really uh, keep our ears open and listen to any recalls on, on any food product mm -hmm. for that matter. But we, do, we like romaine in our salads um, because it's so sturdy. It really holds up for, the, for you know, four or five days. It holds up really well, or like the salad I ate today that was a week old, it was still great. So, um, so yeah, 
we still do use romaine when there isn't um, anything in the news about any kind of E. coli outbreak. But certainly if you are nervous about it, don't use romaine. There's lots of other lettuces that you can get. There just doesn't seem to be one quite as sturdy as romaine. And romaine is a little bit sweeter, which is why I like to have it in the mix. But, um, but watch our batch prep video all about what greens we do include and what vegetables and, and how we make those make these last. So then also in the pressure cooker, we had how many, we had two pressure cookers going, I guess, is all today, and one rice cooker. Sometimes we have three or four pressure cookers going. And we've never blown a circuit, have we? When no, we've we had all the pressure no. cookers. So our, our electrical system here in the kitchen must be pretty good. So this is a um, pressure cooker, lentil taco, taco lentils recipe. And this comes from our cooking webinar. It's the only thing that we have that we sell. And that is our Mexican Fiesta cooking webinar. And that was uh, videotaped. We did a class here at our house. We had like 24 people here that paid to come and take a class. And we did all Mexican food. It was fabulous. And people ahead of time said, could you guys videotape it? Because I live too far away to come, but I want those recipes and I would like to see you make them. So we did videotape it and turned it into an online cooking webinar. So Tom will post a link to that if you're interested. And there's a different recipe that's on the blog for some taco lentils. It's not made in a pressure cooker. It's made on the stove top and it's similar to this. And then there's also this um, a queso, a jalapeno queso sauce and that's in the webinar as well. And I, I had to make it a little bit different today because I didn't have enough uh, cooked white potato at the time. So I substituted some sweet potato instead and it came out really, really good. And accidentally I put um, a little too much chipotle seasoning in it and I was worried that it was gonna to be too hot, but that sweet potato happened to offset the heat of the chipotle powder and it's actually, it's really, really good. So I'm excited to have that because I can make a taco salad this week. I have also have some of my Tammy's Easy Red Salsa that I made that's in the fridge and I made it a couple days before we went out of town. So it's still good. So I can have my salad chopped, I can put my taco lentils, I can put the jalapeno queso sauce on top of that and some chopped onion and fresh cilantro and lime juice and oh, it's gonna be great. So, and I, cause I, for some reason I'm, I've been kind of a hankering, is that, that's a kind of a mid- Hankering. Hankering, yeah. that's a Midwest. We are from Nebraska. We originally. are from Nebraska. That's a Midwest. Uh, kind of term, but I've just been wanting some Mexican food flavors. So, so I think that's everything that we made today. Do you have any other questions? I'm going to jump back. I'm, I'm, He's going to jump back I, over I, there. I had to find the the salad thing, and I'm getting the shareable link. Oh, it, good. Simple it, salad batch prep. I, I think the video is embedded in the blog post. Yeah, but I, that was making a problem for me, so I came okay. over here. <laughs> Okay. okay, so here, here I back on today and I got to just click here and click So just, I'll just tell you while we're chit-chatting, we went to True North Health Center in Santa Rosa for a couple of days. You may have seen my Facebook post about it and that was just on a lark. We had some friends that were there fasting and hi Shada if you're watching. Um, and anyway, she was like, can't you come over and see me? I want to see you. I'll be so close. And so we just decided, heck yeah, let's go. And lucky for us, we were able to get a room at True North. They had an opening and if they have an opening, they will allow people to come who are not uh, fasting or having any kind of medical appointments there. I would love to have had a, a, an appointment with Dr. Goldhammer, who is, um, the head over True North and he's also a chiropractor, but he was booked full that day and I couldn't get in to see him, but that would have been really great. But we're gonna go back. It was a wonderful experience 
and met some great people. We did. We made met some of the doctors. Had yeah, some great conversations. We did her amazing lectures. Of course, you get three meals a day is included with your um, fee for for, for your stay. For yeah. your stay, and you know the food is all SOS free, and it it the same kind of food that we eat at home. So it was perfect. And yeah. it was like a little mini vacation because for two days we didn't have to shop, cook, or wash dishes. That was pretty nice. And we got to visit with our friends and uh, we got to go to the, some local spice shops there that were fantastic. And it was just really yeah. fun. And then we came home to reality where, you know, you have to cook, clean, yeah. and do laundry again. But cooking today was so much fun. We have some questions. Yes, it was fun today. We got a lot made too. So okay. I feel really good oh, about the week. Uh, Michelle is in uh, Tucson, but she met the California Balsamix uh, lady. Those people move around the country. Um, can I have you, um, Kathy has a question. Can she use bananas that have been frozen and thawed yes. for the muffins? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I do that all the time. Because um, you should grab our banana bowl. Let's show you. Let's show yeah. them our banana bowl. Okay. Well, I'm, let me get you the next question okay. then before you do that. So uh, I will. I have in my freezer right behind me. I do have bananas, very ripe bananas that I have frozen. And <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so crazy! And here comes the banana bowl. Here we go. I'm gonna just. Yeah, you can move that rice out of the way. Okay. You can move it over. So this is last week's bananas on top, and they're just like perfect for me right now for my morning <laughs> oats. And then these I'll we buy as here. green as we can because uh, they will ripen. We, we try to stage them so there's always bananas coming into ripeness, and then we and then we let them you know get to where they're really sweet, and then they get opened up and put in the freezer and and uh, for use in baking. So, but these are perfect for eating for me right now. Yeah. So. So when they get too ripe for him to eat in his cereal, um, because he has oats, I guess I wouldn't really call it cereal, but oats, then we peel them and freeze them. And then I can use them for any of those quinoa, banana, oat, muffin mix recipes, or we can use it for our uh, banana nice cream. So, and they work perfect. And what I do is I thaw them out in the microwave if I'm going to be using them for the muffins. So I'll put them in a glass bowl and I'll put them in the microwave and you know I'll do like 30 seconds and then check mm -hmm. them until I get them soft enough that I can mash them. And then when I'm mashing them, that's that's enough um, messing with them, I guess, to help them thaw out the rest of the way. Okay, um, question from SA. Uh, and I'm, I talk with my hands. I'm seeing yeah. that the, what you see on the screen <laughs> is a little delayed for me. And so then I look over and I see myself and I'm not even Italian, and I talk with my hands. Okay, uh, Trudy's asking about a post on YouTube about what dressing we put on our salads. I'm gonna send you back to um, Tuesday with Tammy, I think number three, it's all about vinegar, because we put a variety of flavored uh, balsamic vinegars on our salad, so you can get a full description of that on that video. And then do we have a video up on your our original? Yeah, uh, the creamy balsamic yeah. dressing. Yeah, if you Google nutmeg notebook, creamy balsamic dressing, or you can go search through I think our videos. We made a video. Did we make a video? Well, there's a blog post. There's a, yeah, go to numbersnobook.com and, and in the search put in creamy, creamy balsamic. balsamic dressing. And um, it's a very popular I was going to uh, say, dressing. I don't want to sound like I'm bragging, but it's a very popular she, recipe because it doesn't have any nuts in it. But you would never know that it doesn't have nuts because it's, it's thick and creamy and smooth. And we get emails and Facebook messages and Instagram messages from people all the time. Yeah, there is a video saying, of the dressing okay. uh, that Hey Renee's telling us. It's um, crazy. We've made so many now that we can't always remember what what well, videos there, we've made. I don't made. know. There's like, I don't know. There's like 80 or 90 in there. Yeah, we just know. can't remember. It's um, like, and sometimes we intend to make one, but we haven't made it yet. So yeah. we think we made it. Yeah. Uh, Candy's asking, does Tammy eat oatmeal? Yes, she does in its baked forms, like in the muffins. I eat the raw oats for my morning breakfast. Tammy doesn't okay. eat uh, uh, oats or, you know, she doesn't eat grains for breakfast. Yeah. So, so. Although she, I did when we went to True North because they had yeah. breakfast. And so, although I normally don't eat breakfast, I did sample breakfast and they had an oatmeal. They had a plain oatmeal and then they had an oatmeal that they made with fresh strawberries. And it was really good. You would have thought there was sugar in it, but 
it was sugar free yeah. and it was delicious. So I'm going to come back to a question up the feed here, but from S A, and I don't know how to pronounce the last name here, W H A L E U I, Wally, Wally, Whaley. Um, what's the average time we spend on food prep? Um, well, usually today was a big day because I I wanted the Mexican food, and then since my friend had sent me this recipe, I made this as well. So I don't always make all this. So it takes us uh, about 40 minutes. If Tom's helping me, it takes about 30 to 40 minutes to make this many salads. And But at the same time I was making rice. And yeah. At the same time you were baking potatoes. Yeah. So, so, so it just depends on what we're going to make. So usually two hours yeah. if we... If we split it up over two days, then you know, two we might do two hours on Saturday and two hours on Sunday. But that's not every week because some weeks I only make salads and potatoes because every time we batch prep, we do double recipes so that we have extra to put in the freezer. Because you know, the taco lentils, a lot of these are going in the freezer. Some of the soup, some of the ratatouille, some of the rice. You know, so. Um, so we're, we always have food in the freezer that we can draw from. I mean, we wouldn't, we wouldn't really have to cook for a few weeks. We could live off what we have made in our freezer and in our pantry um, and probably frozen vegetables and frozen fruit. So because we are always well stocked because we never want to not have healthy choices to eat. Okay. Um, I was just doing some tags here for... Okay. Um, uh, Any jump. other questions? Yeah, there is. Let me... Okay. You know, another thing, I could have... If I had your phone, would I be able to see the messages on your phone um, while you're doing that kind of stuff? Would I be able to look on your phone and see? Do you guys eat any bread products at all? Um, that, well... That, Jamie's asking that. No, I don't. Occasionally, he'll have some Dave's uh, killer bread... And we usually have a loaf of it in our freezer, so if our uh, little sweet pea, who's three and a half, our granddaughter, our older granddaughter, um, if she comes over and wants, you know, a, a nut butter sandwich or something, then we have it. But you rarely have bread anymore. In the early days, yeah, you did have a, it. There's a loaf of Dave's killer bread in the freezer that we've had for at least... The we half should a year. we should see if it's freezer burnt. Yeah, yeah. It might so, have some so we don't because the um, you know flour and bread things that are made from flour are very high calorie density and they also are usually very high in sodium and so we just find that whole grains are much more filling. So if we eat brown rice or oats or oat groats, which we have a video on oat groats and that's my favorite way to eat the oats because I like them to be savory and you can cook oat groats in a pressure cooker and have them come out the texture of brown rice. So my friend Sharon McRae taught me how to do that and I have a YouTube video on that. And then we've also potatoes. To me, potatoes are so much more satiating filling and just you feel like you really ate something then bread and or a or a sweet potato or beans or lentils and so we just prefer um, um prefer those items over flour products okay let me go back to the video here i was catching some okay and the flour products for me they just kind of um you know bang on my brain and make me want more so they're very hard for oh. me to moderate. And for a lot of people, um, flour products are hard to moderate. Michelle's so, reminded me, uh, this came up a couple of weeks ago, that another company bought Dave's Bread and now they're sneaking oil into the mix. I did, yeah. And the loaf we have is before older that, before that. I should freeze it even colder and make it last as long <laughs> as I can. Huh? Okay. I don't know. You, how, when was the last time you had bread, though? How long does it take to get over cravings for chips and crunchy things in the beginning? Well, you know, I suppose it depends on how often you have those. So anything that you are used to eating, you know, habitually will be a little more difficult to get over. So, um, you know, it can take 
30 days to decide that, you know, you don't need those salty things. And, you know, it could take longer if you are someone who loves like salted chips or, or things like that. But if you will start your day in a savory way with dark leafy greens, that helps you fight cravings. So um, the dark leafy greens have a component in them called thylakoids. You can look it up and it has been shown in scientific research to help suppress the appetite and curb cravings. And if you start your day with some dark leafy greens, then that sets you up all day to help you balance that and not want the junk food. But every time you step back and eat some of those salty, crunchy things, you've, you've got to start over. It's called neuroadaptation and it takes a while. So some things it takes 30 days, some, some things it can take, you know, 30 to 120 days before you neuroadapt. So in the beginning, you have to use some willpower because your brain is still going to say, hey, I want that stuff because we're hardwired to want to seek out the highest calorie density foods for the least amount of effort. So a clean environment is really your best safeguard. So if you don't have any of that stuff in your house, your car, your workplace, then that's setting yourself up for success because when we see it, smell it, or hear somebody crunching it, then that is igniting that desire in our brain because our brain remembers that fresh we cucumbers ate that. are very crunchy yes. fresh carrots are very crunchy i've gotten uh, attached to celery even more recently because the celery's just been really good to me lately i don't know why um, we're going to need to go yes uh, but uh, um, before we go yes. um uh, greens and things found us and loves our dark leafy uh, greens in our salads Thank so you. um uh, and then we're being asked Oh, Candy's asking, how do we not get down on yourself when you slip up in the beginning? Um, well, you're going for progress, not perfection. perfection. And, 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 so, and just know that it is human to backslide. And our society isn't set yeah. up to make it easy for us to be successful yeah. at eating a plant-based, salt, oil, sugar-free diet. And so just know that, hey, that's going to yeah. happen. Candy, go back into the library uh, quite a ways in the Nutmeg Notebook YouTube video library and find Tammy's, Tammy's story. She talked about my, my journey or Nutmeg Notebook journey or Nutmeg Notebook Tammy's journey. You'll find it that way. And she, it's, about an, um, it's a good 35, 40 minutes long, and she goes through the whole kind of process, evolution that she went through on that. Um, and... Uh, Kim is asking about, will we have another live show this Tuesday since this one's extra? We are having a little bit of a debate with the holidays mm -hmm. coming and some production things we're doing about maybe taking the rest of December off. Um, we'll post on Facebook. So if we are going to have a Tuesday, we'll post it on Facebook. We're still debating the topic on Tuesday if we do have one. Uh, but there's some things we got to get done before Christmas. And so we might be taking yeah. a couple of weeks off for the holiday and then rejoining you in January. Watch Facebook. We'll announce it there. Yeah. So yeah, we, we better, might we, we might be too busy. We might need to just take a break for a few weeks. weeks. Yeah, yeah, because we're also we're preparing for Christmas and we're also preparing for um, our next weight loss class, class. Starts in January. Starts in January. So we're um, working on prepping okay. our lectures for that as well. So so okay. So this is a little preview of what batch cooking looks like, and the Nutmeg Notebook Kitchen. We really thank you guys for coming on today and watching us. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, do it now, click subscribe. And then there's that little bell icon, hit that. And when you do that, that's how you get notifications whenever we do one of these live shows or anytime that we post a new video also. And make sure you go over to the blog, nutmegnotebook.com and subscribe so you can get this recipe for mm, the soup. It's my dinner now. Okay. Oh, hmm. I thought you were going to have a salad. I, there's not time now. Oh, I have to go. Okay. We've, yeah, we've got a, an appointment. So anyway, thanks so much for watching you guys. And give us a thumbs up if you like this video. It helps our ratings here on YouTube. I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom. And we help you get, get healthy, healthy and, and stay healthy. healthy. 
one meal at a time. Thanks a lot for watching, you guys. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye for now.